Welcome to Ambassador in Town. I'm Yucho Soya, the Director of Research at the Asia Pacific Initiative. Today, very, we are very fortunate to have Ambassador Shibi George of India. Ambassador George, welcome to International House of Japan. Thank you, Dr. Hosoya. Uh, India is now at the heart of global politics, so everybody cannot ignore the importance of Indian role in global politics. So that's why we are very fortunate that we can listen to how Indian government is thinking about current international relations. So let me first ask you uh, some questions. You have a long record of engaging in the Middle Eastern region as an Indian diplomat. Uh, what is your impression of Japan so far? You came to Japan last year in November and you have been spending in Japan. Is this your first time to come to Japan? I mean, to live in Japan? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hosoya. I'm very happy that you have invited me to participate in this very interesting platform which you have launched. I wish you a great success. Yes, I'm living in Japan for the first time. Okay. But I visited Japan some 20 years back. Mm. In fact, I was the officer in charge of okay. Japan mm -hmm. in my headquarters in the Ministry of External Affairs for almost four years oh. in 2000, uh, 2002, 2004. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that was the period when we uh, we could uh, see that a, a great change was taking place in India-Japan relationship. Yes. Uh, the visit of uh, Prime Minister Mori yeah. to India, I remember in 2000, and then in 2001, mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister uh, Koizumi yes. uh, visited, uh, uh, you know, my Prime Minister Vajpayee came mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Japan when Prime Minister Koizumi was the Prime Minister here, mm -hmm. I accompanied him. Mm -hmm. So it was almost more than 20 years back. Now when I look at it, I could see a complete transformation in India-Japan relationship in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, what we uh, what we could see that a relationship which was a global partnership yes. uh, later became, um, you know, strategic and global partnership. And later in 2014, between Prime Minister uh, Modi, the Prime Minister of mm -hmm. India, and the Prime Minister Abe San, mm -hmm. the then Prime Minister of Japan, uh, creating that special India-Japan uh, special strategic and yes. global partnership, which transformed the relationship. Mm -hmm. And now, we are seeing that the same relationship getting reinforced mm -hmm. under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi in mm -hmm. India and Prime Minister Kishida San here. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a beautiful relationship, which I'm very happy to be here at this point of time when this relationship is witnessing further uh, upward movement. Mm -hmm. We have seen in the last uh, uh, two years, you know, in uh, 2022 mm -hmm. March, Prime Minister Kishida San was in India. Mm -hmm. This year again in March, he was again in India, and now Prime. Minister Modi was in Hiroshima. Uh, we had a um, great visit during the G7. I, I was uh, lucky to be there in the meetings and also also attended the unveiling of the statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Hiroshima <laughs> yes. for the yes. first time. Yes. So it has been a um, uh, wonderful uh, period since I joined here in uh, November uh, last year. So you have been contributing greatly to the improvement and the enhancement of the bilateral relationship between Japan and India. And particularly, we know that in the last several years, as you mentioned, our relationship has been further enhanced. Yes. And you came to Japan at exactly at this very important year, because this year, Japan is hosting G7 summit meeting and India is hosting the G20 summit meeting. So then I like to ask, you on the importance of Indian uh, leadership role because uh, India seems to undertake a very important leadership role in the so-called global south. How does Indian government assume the value of the grouping of this global south? How do you see the result of the Voice of Global South Summit, which was organized by India virtually in January this year? Oh, I'm very happy that you raised that question. Uh, the um, global South, Voice of Global South Summit was organized by, hosted by Honorable Prime Minister of India yes. in January this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it brought together 125 countries of the Global South. Mm -hmm. I think it is one of the uh, major turning points mm -hmm. in the journey of the Global South. Okay. Who is the Global South? Mm -hmm. Global South has a 
faces tremendous challenges mm -hmm. due to many reasons. Mm -hmm. Globalization has contributed it to uh, many difficulties they are facing in today's world with related to climate change, with regard to debt issues they face, price rise, uh, terrorism, a lot of issues the global south is facing like you know, the rest of the world. But they need to have a platform to raise their voice. Mm. So India would like to hear from them and work with them to understand the issues so that these issues can be appropriately taken up at the G20 summit. Mm -hmm. So a consultation process has happened in January and this was a major success story. And when we came to, when India was invited for the G7 summit, what did we bring to the table? Mm. One, India is the one sixth of the total population of the world. Mm largest populated country in the world, mm. third large economy in terms of purchasing power parity, fifth largest economy in terms of GDP, so and the largest democracy in the world. So India brought a lot of things onto the table in G7, particularly taking mm. the interest of the global south in mind. Mm. So I think it was a uh, great occasion for India could uh, uh, raise the issues related to Global South in the G7 meeting and we will definitely be guided by the uh, Global South concerns in the G20 meeting which is taking place now. You, It is good that you again raised about the G20. You know G20 is a very important organization today. In fact in India after we took over the uh, presidency of G20 uh, in uh, in December last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been organizing regularly various events. In fact, 200 events are planned to be organized in almost every state of India, mm -hmm. every state of India and many cities. I think something to the tune of 60 cities would be hosting various meetings of uh, G20. So it's a, it's also an occasion for India to showcase the economic transformation which has happened in India, the digital transformation which has happened in, in India, and a lot of uh, infrastructure changes which has taken place in India in the last couple of years. So I think it's a win-win situation. One, India uh, definitely look forward to uh, taking up the issues related to the Global South and also uh, the issues that the world faces today. And then at the same time showcase the transformation that has uh, taken place in India in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you look at it, India one sixth of the total population of the world, mm -hmm. but definitely not six one sixth of the total problems of the world. We are always part of the solution. Okay. So that is what we would be able to uh, showcase in these various meetings. Yes, I agree. Japanese Prime Minister Kishida has been trying hard to focus on the importance of the Global South. Because of the importance of the Global South, I think the Japanese government has been uh, 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 thinking that uh, Japan-India relationship is very important because India is generally assumed as uh, one of the leaders or the leading country uh, within the Global South. So then I move on to the question on the Hiroshima G7 summit meeting. Uh, because, uh, well, of course, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi came to Japan to join in the Hiroshima G7 summit meeting, and he played a very important role, uh, such as uh, he met with uh, 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 Ukrainian President Zelensky in Hiroshima, and they had a very good conversation together. And I think that you played a very important role in hosting your Prime Minister in Hiroshima. So how do you see the role of India at the Hiroshima G7 summit meeting? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, what did India bring onto the table? Largest democracy in the world, uh, fastest growing economy in the world, uh, fifth largest economy in the world, a, an economy which was 7.2% growth before COVID, an economy which continues to grow 7.2% after COVID. So we are maintaining that momentum in economic transformation in India. Uh, so we, you know, like everybody else faced COVID, we also faced the COVID challenge. Yes. And when you look back, the way India handled the COVID situation is something worth mentioning. Uh, first of all, we have been able to vaccinate every Indian national. That is 1.4 billion people were vaccinated by Made in India vaccine. 
Not only that, we were able to supply vaccines to more than 100 countries. Mm -hmm. This is another important element of our G20, which has the uh, the theme, what I would say, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. World is one family. We believe in one family, one earth, one future. This is the uh, theme of uh, G20. So that also we were able to, uh, India, India represents that also in the G7 summit. When you look back, I personally feel very happy that we were able to uh, install, uh, unveil a statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Hiroshima. Yes. Uh, you know, Mahatma Gandhi is a champion of non-violence yes. and peace. So his presence uh, is uh, very much uh, a very important presence in Hiroshima and that too it happened during the uh, G7 summit. So I, I look forward to going there on August 6th and also on October 2nd when the world celebrates uh, Mahatma Gandhi's birthday as the International Day of Nonviolence, which was adopted by United Nations unanimously. So it's a very important uh, presence of uh, Mahatma Gandhi in Hiroshima. You raised about uh, the meeting between uh, my Prime Minister yes. and the President of uh, uh, Ukraine. Yes. Um, you know, India's position on the conflict, mm -hmm. on the situation has been very well articulated mm -hmm. by my leadership, my India's leadership on many occasions. Mm -hmm. My Prime Minister has made it very clear that this is not an era of war. This is an era of peace. Mm -hmm. And in his meeting with uh, the president of uh, um, Ukraine in uh, Hiroshima, he has offered all that is possible on the part of India to uh, end this conflict. In fact, India is continuing its humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. In fact, uh, I don't know whether you recall when the crisis started, India has around 20,000 students who were in Ukraine when the war started. With the support and uh, help of the, mm -hmm. the parties concerned, we were able to mm -hmm. evacuate the entire Indian population from Ukraine, mm -hmm. which is a major mm -hmm. achievement. So we are thankful to the parties for you know, making that, um, making it possible. But we continue to uh, work with uh, the international community to ensure that uh, we would be able to have a solution to the issues. I see. Thank you very much. India's role in global politics is becoming larger and larger. That's why many people in the world expect that India can have some role to play to end the war. And I think Japan is also try hard to try to play some role to end the war. So maybe I think uh, both India and Japan can collaborate to try to pressure parties to end the war and to reconstruct the region, the both countries. So then I'd like to ask you about Russia, because uh, this year India is hosting both Shanghai Corpor Corporation Organization Summit uh, next month and also G20 Summit meeting. Both groups have Russia in them. How do you define India's role at these summit meetings, which include Russia? See, India is party to partner uh, in many organizations. Uh, SEO is one of them, Shanghai Corporation Organization. Uh, I think it is an organization which was set up in 2001 mm. and India joined in 2017. Mm. After that, India has been a, playing a very constructive role mm. in SEO and continue to play that yeah. constructive role. This year, India is the chair of the SEO and also uh, of uh, G20, you know, I already explained to you what India is doing on G20, what we look forward to, mm -hmm. including the importance we attach to the, the views of uh, uh, Global South. In SEO, this year is the summit meeting again. I believe it is being organized virtually uh, in coming uh, days uh, in New Delhi. Uh, but there again, India act as a, uh, a, a major catalyst in uh, bringing together like-minded countries so that we will have peace, security, stability, prosperity yeah. in the world. In fact, I think the theme of uh, uh, this year's uh, summit is secure SEO. 
which believes in you know it is a uh, it is an acronym which brings in security stability sovereignty uh, all you know uh, climate related issues environment a lot of issues uh, are addressed together in that too g20 as i mentioned you know vasudeva kutumbakam world is one family we need to take it forward addressing many of the concerns the world uh, faces today including debt uh climate change related issues uh, uh sovereignty issues there are so many issues which we need to work together so that we would have a better world looking ahead yeah i i agree i think that india has a very important role to play because india has a very good relationship with russia with ukraine with united states of course that's why I think Indian position is very important to try to communicate to these countries. Then I'd like to ask you on the relationship between uh, Japan and uh, India, of course, your main job here in Tokyo. <laughs> uh, here in Japan, we always feel that uh, Japan-India relationship has a great potential yes. and for the future. Uh, what do you expect in the future of Japan-India relations and what Jap can Japan do to enhance further the bilateral relationship? I think Japan has many, many things to do furthermore. And in addition to that, my friend told me that everyone, everyone loves India, but India loves no one. But I don't think so. No, I don't think that uh, that's a, <laughs> Maybe. a right answer. But I think India loves everyone. Okay. India is the land of peace and non-violence. I see. Uh, India is one country which never started a war. Mm -hmm. Okay, we faced a war, but never India started a war. Mm -hmm. India is actually, if you look at it, India is the, uh, the uh, uh, representing stability in the mm -hmm. world. Imagine one sixth of the total population of the world mm -hmm. in democracy. Mm -hmm. Imagine there is a uh, peaceful transition of government happening in India mm -hmm. through elections. And we are very proud. When as an ambassador, I look back at India and then I present it. You know, I feel so proud that I represent 1.6 billion people who elect a government. And where government changes, when the people say, no, the government changes. This is a peaceful transition of power. Beautiful. Yeah. We don't see it in many places. So I feel so proud about it. Second, the economic transformation which is happening in India today. And I mentioned about it. India is growing 7 plus percentage of GDP even after the COVID-19 pandemic, despite the challenges which we face. Yeah. So India as the fifth largest economy mm -hmm. and Japan as the third largest economy, there is a lot we can do together so that our both the countries will benefit. When you look at it, we have a special strategic and global partnership, which has strategic element in it, which has political engagement in it, which has engagement between the officials. In fact, we have more than 60 dialogue mechanisms which are in place. Mm -hmm. We have the framework in place. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is that we need to have a quantum leap, not an incremental progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the framework in place. There are 1500 Japanese companies in India. Each one of them have a success story to tell. Okay. I want to tell that story. Mm. I want them also to tell that story mm. so that our Japanese friends know that there is a place where they can have a success story and that is India. Each one of them have told me that they have a success story in India. Mm. They are making money in India. They are making for India. They are making for the world. They also export it outside India to other countries. But what I want the Japanese companies to focus more mm. is in the manufacturing. Okay. You manufacture for India, you manufacture also for Japan. Mm. Mm. That you are doing with some other countries, but do it with India also. Make in India, send it back to Japan. Make in India, export it to other countries. So in addition to make in India for India, make for the globe, make for the world. That is what we need to do. And that would benefit India and Japan. Yeah. Both the countries, you know, our trade is stuck at around 20 billion dollars. I see huge potential because as you said, you know, Japanese love India and Indians love Japanese. We have no political uh, issues. We have no history of uh, conflict or fight. We love each other. 
you know, I think Japan is, uh, uh, Japan is one of the most liked countries in India. If you look at it, you know, there is a reason for that. One, the historical reasons. Our, our civilizational connect. Uh, you know about the Daikokuten. Daikokuten is Lord Shiva. Okay. That's lucky gods. Yeah. You know, there is a civilizational connect. I Buddhism, see. civilizational connect. I we see. heard about Justice Pal, who gave the verdict in the, in the Tokyo trial. Yes. You know, there is a lot of connect in the past. Right. And now we have a framework in, the, in place in the form of a special strategic and global partnership with 60 dialogue mechanisms, including an annual summit. Our prime ministers meet every year at least once. Our foreign minister and defense minister meet two plus two. We have uh, several uh, strategic engagement in the form of military to military talks, uh, army to army talks, mm. uh, naval exercises, Malabar exercises, uh, the Veer Guardian, uh, the Dharma Guardian, a lot of exercises mm. that shows our trust. But what is required is the business also to understand and use this opportunity to further build our relationship. So if we have 1500 companies in India, I would like to have 15,000 <laughs> Japanese companies in India. What we need is a quantum leap. Take the opportunity in India, we are 1 billion opportunities. I want the Japanese companies to use that opportunities so that we can have more trade, more uh, investment and more economic mm -hmm. partnership with a view to develop a win-win situation for India and Japan. Yeah, I agree. Indian people are always encouraging Japanese yes. to do more. And yes. I think uh, we have so many things to do more to enhance our relations. Yes. India is a young country with its power, energy and a dynamism. And with Japanese technology, Japanese experience, I think that if we combine these things together, maybe both India and Japan can be richer yes. and much more powerful. Yeah, I'm happy that you mentioned about the technology. That is the, you know, one of the important elements. If you look at it, India's economic transformation and econom and the technological transformation, Japan played a very important role. India's uh, automobile revolution. You remember yeah. Suzuki, which came to India yes. some 40 years back. <laughs> it has transformed uh, yeah. India's automobile sector. Then the metros came yes. in 20 years back. You know, I was the, as I mentioned, I was the officer oh, in yes, charge yes. in Delhi yes. when these negotiations were taking place. So metro started in Delhi. Now most of the Indian cities are either already have or in the process of building a metro. Again, a Japanese connect. Yeah. And now we are working on one of the most important elements of technology that is Shinkansen. Yeah. The, the, from Ahmedabad to Mumbai, I hope we will be able to have, uh, a, a, you know, soon the first Shinkansen to go over mm -hmm. from Ahmedabad to Mumbai, which we are working on. Uh, so, technological cooperation. Mm -hmm. Now, today's era, what is it of? Uh, the semiconductors, mm -hmm. um, emerging and uh, critical yes. uh, technology, yes. uh, robotics, uh, AI. There are so many areas. Japan has the technology. India has the talent. We both can benefit each other. I think this is time to be focused on this. And Japan should look at the opportunity in India. As I said, one billion opportunities. And, you know, India should also work towards more, you know, uh, engaging more with the Japanese. This is my job. I'm a salesman as an ambassador. Every ambassador is a salesman. And I'm very happy that I have a very good product. India is a great product. And India, uh, Japan is a great market. So we should club together and work together so that we will have a win-win situation. Yeah, I agree. We have a very strong bilateral relations and we also have the Quad framework with the United States, with Australia. But using that framework as well, maybe Japan and India can furthermore collaborate in the cutting, cutting edge technology as well. And today, by the way, we are not using plastic bottles because uh, <laughs> yes. uh, in India, India government is introducing a new uh, practice about these environmental protections. Can you explain some of the new efforts? Well, I'm very happy government... that you noticed it, that we are not using plastic, single-use plastic users. This is one of the initiatives which was taken by my prime minister, mm -hmm. who introduced a new theme called life. Life mission, that is lifestyle for environment. That is, you know, you bring in changes in yourself so that you would be able to contribute towards the, the, in the environment. One of the things was to get rid of single use plastic. Mm -hmm. Another thing was uh, be more close to the nature. For example, we launched this uh, alliance of big cat alliance again to 
protect the big cats like lion, leopard, tiger, uh, yeah. uh, cheetah. Many of them, you know, they are, many of them are facing problems. But then India is working again, taking the lead to bring mm -hmm. together an alliance so that uh, it can be addressed. Another important alliance is International Solar Alliance. Using solar energy, we brought many countries together. I think more than 100 countries have, including Japan, are partner to that. So a lot of efforts have been put in place uh, in, uh, in, 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 in addressing the main concern which we face, and that is uh, climate change. Uh, you also mentioned about the importance of this region. Indo-Pacific. Indo-Pacific is perhaps the most important geopolitical construct today. And India, Japan together and also as you know, you mentioned again about the Quad, the partnership. So we are all factors of stability, security, safety and uh, peace and st uh, prosperity in this part of the world. You know, uh, ocean is no more a benign uh, entity anymore. Uh, many of the challenges we face, uh, including uh, piracy, uh, terrorism, uh, natural disasters, uh, you know, so the importance of sea lane is, the security of sea lane is very important. Particularly, I was ambassador in Kuwait, you know, you started by asking about the Middle East. I was ambassador in Kuwait. Japan's oil import comes from the Middle East. What is the route it takes? It comes from the Gulf yes. to the Arabian Sea, territorial waters of India, Indian Ocean, again back to territorial waters of India, Bay of Bengal, Andaman, Nicobar Islands, Malacca Straits, then come to South China Sea and way to back. This sea lane is very important. So Indian Ocean again is very important partner of uh, Indo-Pacific. So security, safety of uh, that region is very important. Similar is the case here. Any developments in this part of the world has a direct impact on India and India's uh, prosperity. Similarly, any development in that Indian Ocean region has a direct impact on Japan's stability, security and prosperity. So it's very important that we work together. So any investment in India, any business in India is an investment in Japan's strategic depth. We need to promote that. We need to persuade the companies to look at that, open up and see the opportunity and grab it. Well, thank you very much. You are <laughs> always encouraging Japanese people. We share so many things. We share the Indo-Pacific region. We share democratic system and we share common interests. That's why there are so many rooms for us to collaborate yes, furthermore. Yes. So in that sense, I'm really grateful for, for sharing your great wisdom with us. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. I'm so happy that I could join you. I wish you a very, very successful year ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.